Our Mark Watts is live now in South Central Los Angeles with tonight's report. Hello, Mark. Hi, Jerry, Jane. I'm sitting outside a South Central LA home where I sort of live for 24 hours exactly two weeks ago today, I felt, in order to properly tell this upcoming story of this 10-year-old boy whose life has been absolutely ruined by violence, I felt that I had to move in with the family and live with the boy. Before I show you exactly who he is, let me introduce you to the rest of the neighborhood. Welcome to 90th Street near Compton Avenue in South Central LA, perhaps the most diverse block of real estate in the inner city. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Two o'clock in the afternoon, it's a melting pot of blacks, whites, Latinos, and Asian Americans. Young and old live here. Pit bulls and other dogs often run wild. So do the chickens. At times, 90th Street takes on the look of a foot stomping block party. The old lady at the corner plays the music. It's usually BYOB. The popsicle man brings kids refreshments. And police, they're always invited. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's a neighborhood where the playful scream of children can be heard as often as the scream of sirens. Make no mistakes, this block is owned and operated by gangs. So, once a day, the streets are cleared of kids play so two rival gangs can engage in senseless gunplay. 3 o'clock p.m. You can set your watch by it. You can set your watch by it. And, and more than fear is excitement. Why are you guys fighting each other? Uh, we don't get along. Something gonna go down today? No. And they just start shooting down the street. The bullets can go anywhere. The shooter was just shooting back. That's all. I mean, you guys go right head to head, right in front of each yeah. other. Yeah. 10-year-old Ricky Allen has been dodging the bullets for much of his young life. He has a front row season ticket to the Daily War Games. Unfortunately, he has seen about all the live action he can handle. When I see a pile of people ganging up on one house, I scoot back. You ever run in the house or, or hit the floor? Yeah. Sometimes you got to hit the deck, huh? Yeah. 3.30. My 24-hour companionship with Ricky revealed a life of constant exposure to frightening brutality. Five years ago, someone tried to kill Ricky. The scar you see above his lip was caused when a broom handle was thrust through his jaw. He fell through a glass coffee table three years ago and crashed head-on into a telephone pole on a skateboard when he was eight. Physically, he's okay, but Ricky receives almost daily psychiatric treatment for a host of mental disorders and symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome. Symptoms such as depression, anger, and sleep disturbances. How much all this stuff never happens to me? Ricky is the second oldest child. He and his family often talk about moving, but they're stuck. His mom is unemployed, his dad is in prison, and really, the only foundation he has to base his life upon is what he sees on the streets, 4 p.m. Ricky! Hey, Get back over there! Get down here! Don't you see what they're doing? Dion, move! Yeah. Yeah. It's not often a photographer captures a gang shootout in progress. These pictures are dramatic. But for the kids living here, it's just a rerun of yesterday. It's funny because sometimes we're so used to it that when it's late, everybody's disappointed. I'm not scared because I see it every day. Well, body laying in the street for most of these kids, uh, it doesn't phase them very much. It doesn't seem to, at least outwardly. All signs of stress, however, are not obvious. Some symptoms of shell shock show up while sleeping. One time I had a dream that me and my sister and my mom was went to the grocery store and then they started shooting, they shot us all. 5 p.m. No one was injured in the shootout and deputies eventually arrested the gunman. Scenes like this discourage Ricky from joining a gang. It was hard to believe he even thinks about being in one. He was friendly and always smiling, but Ricky's mother says his heavy dosage of medication today kept him calm and peaceful disguising his real behavior. I fight other kids and sneak on with pencils. And why do you think you, you get in a lot of fights? 
Because what I see over here. Give me the other bread, Ricky. Sit down, Devin. 7.30 p.m., dinner time. Because of the medication, Ricky is gaining weight. And if Ricky's mom has her choice, her son won't stay on medication much longer, which could be risky. When not sedated, he's very hyperactive, defiant, and destructive. 9 p.m. Surrounded by all these kids, I felt like a big brother, something Ricky and all his little brothers so desperately need. I was also kind of scared, because the reminders of violence seemed to keep knocking at the door. Gunshots outside could be heard above the TV noise. I know they heard them, but no one even mentioned anything about it. Maybe if, if I had or could do better for myself, then I could pick up and take them away from me. The lights get turned out at the Allen House at 9 o'clock. The day starts all over again for Ricky at 7 o'clock in the morning. The bus picks him up at 8, and he admits his nights are often interrupted by fears that someone is going to come get him. I might think about it. I might get back, but I might get on the couch because I get scared sometimes. I think they're coming in the house sometimes. Next morning, 8 a.m. This is the only place Ricky truly feels safe. But psychiatrists say, here at this special school for mentally ill children, they see even more effects of Ricky's war-torn childhood. It's hampered his learning abilities. And at 10, he is just now learning how to read. 1.30 p.m., school's almost out. Ricky doesn't pay attention or interact with the other students very well. He's more concerned about the lessons of survival back home. Streetwise, Ricky may be smarter than any of his classmates, but in real life, he's flunking out. Right now, he's at the point where they think hospitalization might be good for him. Medication doesn't seem to be working. And so it's, it's like that's the last resort for him now. So instead of his condition <laughs> getting better, it seems to be worsening. And the problems don't end there for Ricky Allen. As you can see behind me, the windows of his home boarded up, the same one I spent 24 hours in. I was informed tonight on the streets, seven days ago, an arsonist burned Ricky and his family out of this house. I understand on the streets that the family is now in hiding. It has moved somewhere in Long Beach. For some people and for some kids in this neighborhood, the problems just never seem to end. Coming up in part three of Shell Shock tomorrow, a story on where kids turn to for help. Where do Shell Shock children go for help? A fantastic hospital that does a remarkable job of rehabilitating Shell Shock children and returning them to the mainstream of society. That all coming up in part three tomorrow. Jerry, Jane. Mark, thanks. Uh, your decision to spend the night with that family was a very effective way to tell a very sad story. Ricky, uh, definitely shell shock. You know, li literally growing up, fighting for his life. Shell shock children. Mark. Mark, good evening. Good evening, Jerry Jane. I'm at 80th Street and Town Avenue. Police statistics indicate this neighborhood is by far the most violent in the entire city. Just 10, di 10 days ago, someone was gunned down right here on the sidewalk. Today, the body, the crime tape, of course, all gone. But the psychological aftershocks for the children linger on, not just the children that saw the body, but the children who even saw the shooting. And, of course, that is the focus of our special report tonight. I want to warn you, some of the pictures you are about to see may be very graphic, very disturbing, very illustrative, but just imagine seeing them through the eyes of a five-year-old. We've been jumping in L.A. We're the shooting king of the world. Tonight, one man is dead. A young man is dead. Painful stories of tragedy, trauma, and terror told nightly on local newscast. But the stories of children traumatized by these events that never get told are just as painful. <laughs> Don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry, kid. The phenomena from the external world begin to impact on the child very early on. 
My name is Tommy Lee Baker the third, and I am nine years old. And I seen my mama get shot. I seen other people get shot. I seen my mama get beat up on. Hundreds of South Central LA kids, just like Tommy Baker, are exposed to more violence in a single day than most of us see in a lifetime. Murders, suicides, sniper attacks, domestic violence, and rapes. It's all managed to poison the minds of our children. Such exposure often leaves long-term effects can cause psychiatric disorders and even brain damage. And often children will act out what they have seen. Whenever I see my mother fight, then I go to my father, then the next day I come to I fight somebody else. Nine-year-old Tommy Baker is a disturbed child. The violence he has seen has scarred him psychologically and reduced his ability to think and learn. He attends a special school and receives psychiatric treatment every day. He has lived a life of hell. You're going to have to put 11 take away There you go, so you can put this one up here. All right. He was born to a single mother addicted to PCP. Tommy says he has watched his mom shoot up, get beat up, and get shot. And for the first eight years of his life, he was raised only by his mother in different homes and neighborhoods, yet all filled with violence. Uh, it's too many things, I think. Doctors also say the exposure to violence has caused him to be hyperactive and destructive. And Tommy's teachers upset. say he kicks chairs and walls at school. He now lives with his dad, and the father blames himself for Tommy's troubles. His dad says, he should have taken his son from his mother when Tommy was four. But I waited four years later till he was eight. And that's four more years of hell going through hell. And I had struck a match and I just stood up and then, and then it burnt. But he didn't never know who did it either. You just burnt the boy up? Yeah. Tommy talks without regret about the time when he tossed a firebomb at a neighborhood bully, the time he purposefully broke someone else's arm. And I bent on it, then it broke, it said. Doctors say if Tommy doesn't change soon, he will be responsible for the same violent acts which have disrupted his young life and caused him to have psychiatric disorders. You think if you'd never been exposed to violence, you wouldn't be the way you are today? Yes. He'd probably be a, a better little boy. Yes. And the conduct disorder can move to be extremely severe with children who actually murder and kill. What? In L.A. County, someone gets murdered every four and a half hours. And as Los Angeles approaches its bloodiest year ever, more and more children will be exposed to acts of violence. And every once in a while, TV news cameras happen to be rolling when violent shootouts are in progress. This shooting took place at a downtown LA gas station. Three 13-year-old girls inside the convenience store watched it all happen. They were questioned by police as witnesses and later had to undergo counseling for psychiatric trauma. Newly alarming psychologist, are recent findings that children routinely exposed to violence exhibit the same symptoms that plague combat veterans. Jack yeah. Lyon, okay. a yeah. Purple Heart yeah, recipient yeah, sure. from the Vietnam what, War. What, what, what goes on is that you, you have a saturation point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can watch just so much of this and experience just so much of this horror, and I think probably all of us have different tolerance levels, but there'll come a point when you're there, and then you're shell-shocked. Many of the kids that we see in our crime, violence-ridden neighborhoods are veterans of community wars, and so that there is a close parallel. We see it every day. It, it, it all stopped because we can't be on the streets no more. I seen my best friend get shot, and this old man get shot. How old are you? Five. You see this every day? Five years old. Yeah. 
what we feel we were robbed of in a way was we lost a lot of innocence. We lost our youth. You're talking to kids five and six years old. What you're robbing them of is their childhood. Man. Jack Lyon, Tommy Baker, and all these little boys who dodge bullets every day in South Central LA share something in common. Although the two battlefields are continents apart, the symptoms of war are the same. Symptoms known as post-traumatic stress disorder. How they were behaving, you might think they had a mental illness or were emotionally something was wrong with them, when in reality they're in a perfectly normal reaction to an absolutely abnormal situation. What bothers experts most about post-traumatic stress disorder is that it can often lead to homicide and suicide. Like I said, that this was the bus, then I had slid under the bus wheel. You had slid under the bus wheel on purpose to try to kill yourself. And there are thousands of other Tommy Bakers suffering the same way. Coming up tomorrow in part two of Shell Shock, we spend 24 hours with another Shell Shock child in another violence infested neighborhood. And during the time we spent with him, we happened to capture a gang shootout on camera that took place right in front of his house. All that coming up tomorrow in part two of Shell Shock. Jerry, Jane. Well, that's a heck of a wake-up call.